driving in regional and remote Australia is one of the most rewarding experiences that we can have. Whether for business or pleasure, plan well and be safe. In our cities, we become very familiar with driving conditions and how to make allowances for them. But sometimes we might take a longer journey on regional or remote roads or in conditions that we're not familiar with. So what do you need to look out for and what can we do to minimise any risk? We need to plan and prepare for our journey and there are a few things to focus on. The journey, the environment, the vehicle and most importantly, you, the driver. Before setting out on any journey, you need to do a quick inspection of the vehicle. And for longer journeys or into remote areas, it's worth taking a little extra time to make sure everything is just right. So let's begin by checking out our vehicle. I'm just about to head out on a long journey and any time we get behind the wheel, we should do a pre-start. But for longer trips, it's essential and there's a few things that we need to have a look at. So let's start under the bonnet. Now this vehicle's just been serviced, so I'm confident that it's roadworthy, but it's my responsibility as the driver to make sure that everything's okay. Under the bonnet, we need to check our fluid levels. Coolant, brake fluid, washer wiper fluid, power steering, and of course, our oil. Now this vehicle's been parked overnight, and that's a good thing, because what I'm able to do very easily is check underneath for any leaks, coolant, oil or even brake fluid. Once we've checked our fluid levels, the next thing we need to do is to have a look at our tyres. When we look at our tyres, if they're underinflated, you'll see a bulge at the bottom. Check for any wear on the tread. If it's worn on the shoulders, it could be a sign of poor wheel alignment, but it could also be that they're running at a lower pressure. Look at the side walls and make sure that there are no nicks or cuts or any other damage and then run your finger down the tread. You'll feel bumps there. These are the tread wear indicators. When it gets down to those bumps, the tire is due for replacement. You'll need to check all four tires and also, importantly, the spare. You'll find information about recommended tire pressures in the owner's manual and also on a plaque, which is usually located on the door. It's a good idea to regularly check your tire pressures. Make it part of your routine each time you get fuel. During our walk around, we need to check the lenses, make sure that there's no cracks or damage. And while we're at it, we might as well check the panels to make sure that there's nothing that we haven't noticed before. It's also important that we look at the glass, the windscreen, the side windows, and the rear window to make sure that they're both clean and undamaged. We also need to check the functionality of our lights, the headlights, the brake lights, the indicators, and the hazard lights. If you're not confident doing the checks, find somebody with the knowledge to help you or even get them to do it on your behalf. But when you finish your pre-start, there's three more things to have a look at. The first one is to make sure that everything is safely and securely stowed in the vehicle. And that means nothing loose on the seat or on the floor. And the reason that we do that is that the forces in a crash are extreme. And something like this laptop, which weighs two or three kilos, would be the equivalent of 50 or 60 kilos of sharp edged metal bouncing around inside the cabin. The second and most important thing is mindfulness, and that's about you, the driver. It's making sure that you put aside all the issues and thoughts of the day and concentrate on the one thing which is more important than anything else, and that's driving the vehicle. Now that we've finished our pre-starts, we've made sure everything is safely and securely stowed, and we have the right mindset, there's one more thing to do before we begin our journey. And that's to check around the vehicle for any hidden or reversing hazards. In part two, we'll look a little closer at fatigue and journey management.